And you're back to Prime Morning. Thank you for tuning in. My name is Asiya Dua Akumia. And like we always say, make sure that you get interactive with us and hop on Facebook and hit the share button. Everybody needs to know that we are currently live on your screens. Now it's time for a very great conversation. And our guest is seated for that one. Uh, she's a presenter right here with us at Multimedia, Lois Shala Adeyemi. But I call her Shalzi. <laughs> It's all about the all-new show that has started right here on Joy Prime, and that is Just Turned 18. You know, this year, the elections is just around the corner. And so it's imperative that we bring things like this to you, to your doorstep. Individuals that have just turned 18, what are their thoughts about it? What at all would they love to do now that they are of legal age? Shola, or Shozi, like I call her, is bringing it bare to you right here on Joy Prime, and that is all about Just Turned 18. But before that, uh, KMJ, KMJ, so we need to take some comments from you. There are a whole lot of comments and reactions that have come from you, our lovely viewers, uh, from uh, News Flash uh, to What's Trending and all of that. So we need to um, read some comments from you. But, uh, Shola, Shola, good morning to you. Good morning. Kevin will bring you that to you, but, yeah, Shola. Yes, ma'am. What's up with you? I'm okay. I'm you look good. nice. I love your dress. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. I think you look amazing. Thank too. you, thank you, thank you. My voice, my voice is gone. Oh, we we'll take it like that. Yeah, like thank that. you for taking me as I am. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it's all about just turn 18. Yes, I definitely. saw this, I saw this last week. I'm like, this will be very interesting because the youth has a lot to share. Mm -hmm. They have a lot to say. Mm -hmm. So, Just Turned 18, what would you say, or what exactly is the motive behind Just Turned 18? I like that you said when you saw it, yeah. it was intriguing. And yeah. that's exactly why we you know, decided to take this step. Because whenever we say um, elections, we never... I mean, youth who come and have reforms and say what they want to say, but we never really hear anything from them as mm. a group. So we decided to go into you know, communities to speak to people children or, you know, people who have just turned 18 because, True. I mean, we wanted to see, uh, you know, elections and politics from their perspectives through their lens, get to understand what will influence someone who has just turned 18 to say, I want to vote for this particular party or I want to, you know, even be involved in the whole election process. So, yes, that's the reason. The motive behind this is just to see and understand politics um, uh, through the lens of first-time voters to actually see what they uh, want, what mm. make someone who has just turned 18 or a mm. first-time voter mm. want to go and stand in the queue because, yeah. you know, it's terribly long yeah. and you can spend all your day there. What yeah. would make, you know, uh, a first-time voter say, okay, I've changed my mind, I want to go and do this? And what to even make them say they want? Because obviously, it's two sides to the coin. People want to vote, people don't want to vote. So, yes, we went, give them voices, and, I mean, at the end of the day, we just really want to hear everything from their perspective. This is very interesting for me. For me personally, when I turned 18, mm. the only thing that excited me about getting the voter's ID was I would officially have a legal something to show that I'm 18. That, that was all that I was concerned about. <laughs> um, it didn't really matter to no. me what this government is doing, mm -mm. what this political party, no. But here's the thing. Even at that age, you mm. know, it's like when you grow up in a setting where uh, a lot of people, especially your parents, or family members who partook in, in your upbringing have so much influence on you. Mm -hmm. It could even affect the your, yeah. the, um, when it comes to the political party mm -hmm. or your affiliation towards mm -hmm. a particular party. Mm -hmm. You might not have the understanding, but you know that your mother and father that, are this yes. party, so no matter what, <laughs> that is where you would go. So you don't necessarily have a voice of your own. Mm -hmm. So I'm really interested <coughs> in the very first episode mm -hmm. that you aired, mm -hmm. what really were some of the things that they these said, individuals shared. Yeah, I'll, you know, I resonate with what she said, that yeah. when you were younger, all you wanted to do was just go and get yourself an ID card. Yeah, but it was so cute. Yeah, but it was <laughs> so cute that these first-time voters, uh, you know, they have a lot to say. I mean, when, you speak, when I spoke to them, people said that they won't vote because unemployment is a lot in the community. So we went to Jamestown, specifically at Kamanjen, and um, they were saying that they won't, some people said they won't vote because of unemployment. People said the education system doesn't at work 18. for them. And at 18, and I'm asking myself, wow, this, this children really want change. You understand? Right. And before I even go on, I'm trying to say that this uh, Justin 18 is 
we are using this initiative to uh, prove that these people have a, have a voice. They see all yes, people. our last sitting yeah. president was able to win the elections by over 500,000 votes. Sure. This year alone, it is estimated that 17 million people will be voting. And out of the 17 million people, over 850,000 of them are first-time voters. So imagine that all these 850,000 uh, you know, first-time voters say, okay, I want to vote for this particular party. Right. Meaning the party will win. So first of all, the first-time voters are very important. They are key, very, very important in you know, everything we're doing. And uh, it will shock you that these children had a lot to say that until they see change until employment is changed and so people have better jobs to do yeah, yeah. they don't want yeah. to vote others also uh you know saying that they like that there are jobs to do others said the education system is working for them so yes you we had a lot a lot was said on there and it was amazing it was mm. amazing mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm very particular about it because, and it's even amazing that even at that age, they have so much to they share, like so I said. Much. Me, my time, you don't really have so much information made bare to you when mm -hmm. it comes to things that are going on politically. Mm -hmm. Because it looks like you don't even have a say when it comes to certain things. You just have to go according <laughs> to what mommy says, mm -hmm. or daddy says, mm -hmm. or this is what their family is, or you are, you are this tribe, you are from this clan. Yeah. So that is all, that is it. But I'm happy that we're having diverse opinions with this mm -hmm. particular mm -hmm. one. Oh, with this new generation, mm -hmm. that our crop of generation that is coming up. Cam Jay is here. Mm, yeah. You were, you were missing for a little bit. Exactly. Yeah, I was enjoying the conversation. Yeah. I mean, um, it's a good thing. It's a good initiative. I'm interested in who they said they'll be voting for. <laughs> So we are not trying to we are not trying to create chaos. We don't want any partisan. That's not partisan. No, 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 no. no we no want peace. you to just we want no. peace. <laughs> we want peace. So we just want to know why mm. they would get up to go and queue. Because as I said, you know when you go in the morning, there's a very big probability that you'll come back, mm. you know, in the evening. So what will make a first time voter say, um, I want to get up to go and vote? Just, just like um Isidua said, sometimes their background influences these decisions. Your mom says I'm party A. So obviously in your head when you turn 18 you'll be party a mm -hmm. but when we spoke to these people that is not what they are saying people are even trying to change things i mean someone said he's excited mm -hmm. okay to be voting because he doesn't have to follow his parents footsteps their parents have stayed in the situation i mean every four years they keep voting for these parties and they don't see any change so they are you know happy that now that they are 18 they get to make different decisions they don't have to toe the lines of their parents and as i said yeah, this thanks. is exciting because you know as 18 year olds you're legal I mean, in our parts of the world, they don't really leave you. Uh, freedom is not really in your hands. But to see that these children want to mm. make these changes for themselves is, you know, amazing to see. Mm. Mm. Okay. So, uh, I love it. Yeah, we've been joined also by Christopher Wisdom Penu, a National Coordinator, Ghana Youth Manifesto. I saw this and I'm like, okay, he's the one, the right person to give us the numbers. <laughs> yep. Yep. The, yep. the statistics of exactly you know, all the research that you've done in relation to the youth uh, having a say, the youth being a huge um, partaker of so much importance to this year's general elections. Good morning to you, Christopher. Good morning. How are you? I'm doing well. Oh, Chris, you can be louder for us. <laughs> the figures are scary. <laughs> uh, it's it's not really. to it out, you know, so... Yeah. <laughs> I think we just have some rainy season or yeah. rainy day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Quite beaten by the rain. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. So, so sorry. My, sorry. And, and naturally, I have a very uh, tiny voice. So, okay. Uh, oh, okay. Pardon me. Uh, so, uh, briefly, powerful. good morning to you. Mm. Mm. Uh, we are doing well. And greetings from my team. And good okay. morning to your viewers as well. Right. Awesome. Right. Awesome. Right. Right. Awesome. Right. And uh, we've seen some of the figures. I mean, w how did the research process go, you know, looking into it? Right. So um, the Ghana Youth Manifesto, first of all, uh, is an initiative by young people across the 16 regions of Ghana, okay. including uh, youth-centered organizations such as Foundation for Security and Development in Africa and then other youth-centered organizations. So what we did was uh, we kind of formed a coalition um, so, and we call such a coalition the core team to lead the process of, of developing the Ghana Youth Manifesto. The first point was the establishment of the core team. Then secondly, we developed the instrument uh, to collect the data. So within that process, what we did was to use uh, 
expect opinion with respect to research, qualitative uh, research, what, what we did. And we gathered the data about 3,565 qualitative uh, uh, data. And then we analyzed the data, validated the data. And then after that, used the data for the development of the Ghana Youth Manifesto. Yes, so. And this is around mm -hmm. all the um, 16 regions, right? 16 regions, yeah. How, how, how was the difficulty in trying to let the respondents understand that this is what we're trying to figure out? Um, it was really difficult, um, especially in terms of collecting the data. Uh, young people are kind of fed up. Mm. When you go to them, you ask them, uh, they will ask you, are you here for a political party? Mm -hmm. Even if you said you are not for a political party, the comment is, uh, they are tired of the, uh, the current status quo of how politicians are running the country. So if you mention any, anything politics, then they become uh, angry and they, they said they don't want to have anything to do with politics. So briefly, it's, it's kind of very difficult and even opening up because of how our leaders are running the country, they are not ready to open up yeah. in terms of uh, our data collection processes throughout the system region. And it's, it almost seems that is becoming the norm yeah. uh, throughout the entire system region. And I think the earlier we tackle this, the better it's going to be for us. Since so, voting is not just a right, it's also, yeah. as well as a responsibility yeah. That's true. as well. Yeah. It's a civic right, so yeah. you need to. Right. So um, the youth, what age range? Did you use in so, collecting the data? Briefly, we used uh, 15 to 35. Okay. Um, because, because that is, we are looking at the youth. Okay. So, according to the constitution, right. the youth ranging from the bracket. 15 mm. to 35. Yeah. Now, let's come to the ones who are legal now. Um, Shala mentioned uh, the numbers you mentioned. Yeah, that uh, this is estimated that over 850,000 first time voters will be voting this year. Mm. So uh, that is what we have. But I can relate to what he said earlier that um, when you enter these communities and you try to speak to these people, you know, the fact that they will even come on TV was, was, was war, okay? Because in their heads, they know when they say these things. Because, it, as I said, before they turned yeah. 18, they didn't have a voice. They had heard people say, okay, I'm party A and I'm party B. And they had seen that when you go to uh, these polling stations or the registration centers, these are the things that happen there. So imagine that you have to voice your thoughts. What's your innermost, you know, what you've been thinking all along. Probably you won't change here, you won't change there. It's difficult for them to say because of how people in the community will react act mm. to it because you're literally telling people that okay this hasn't been done so sometimes they are afraid of it so it's not easy to you know get these people to speak to but the few people that we do get they are brave um i i always uh, you know clap for them at the end because it's a, it's a lot they tell you things i mean as you said things are not changing if every four years things remain the same mm. why would somebody say i want to get up to vote but um these children uh, or these first-time voters that we have spoken to are uh, you know, they are really excited to change yeah. things for themselves. They would, they, would, they would be. I was excited to vote for the very first time, to have the experience, to go stand in a queue. Uh, yeah, waking up very early in the morning to go stand in a queue to vote. So mm. I think that with the first timers, mm. it would, you know, be an exciting thing for them. But what I'm thinking about right now, Elliot, you did mention something that um, uh, with the ruling government, uh, they won with over 500,000 votes yeah. uh, difference. Yeah. And now we have over 800,000 um, new voters, or uh, just turned 18 voters. Okay, so uh, in the last four years, people have died. People have gone away and all of that. What is the probability that of these figures that it will go towards a particular political party? And that's what I'm just, my mind is just all over the place right now. <laughs> just thinking about it, looking at the figures. Mm. You get what I'm saying, yeah. Christopher? Yeah. Interestingly, I think young people are becoming more aware and uh, they are voting these days based on research. I think uh, Van Japo uh, and then as well as Emmanuel Deborah did a research and then I think from 2012, 2013, uh, and that research uh, kind of uh, threw more light on the fact that young people are no more towing the lines of, uh, okay, my family. My father, my mother. My, yeah. Exactly, yeah. Or yeah. 
basically I'm coming from this region, this mm -hmm. ethnic group, mm -hmm. so I have to vote in that manner. Both people are becoming more aware and are voting based on issues, based mm -hmm. on principles and based on policies. So I believe uh, like we saw what happened uh, in 2016, 2020, yeah. uh, of course, when before Nanado wins, it was based on free SHS. Mm -hmm. <laughs> such, such a policy was the game changer for yeah. the MPP. Yeah. And likewise, coming 2024 is going to be based on issue. What policies are you bringing? Yeah, we know a number of young people as well are still towing towards ethnic background and partisans. That's true. But there is a huge number of these guys who are kind of being more aware, more conscious, and taking into consideration the fact that uh, they needed to vote based on issues, based on uh, policies that the parties are bringing on board. Because, of course, education, we are receiving education, and that education should have the capacity to kind of enlighten us to vote towards issues and no more towards uh, a certain political party association. Mm. Exactly. Ademia, I'm curious. Mm. So these are young guys that you spoke to them. Yeah. You saw the need for them to feel that they now belong because mm. they have that legal age that would give that opportunity for them to vote. Mm. Beyond seeing the hunger of they wanting a change or they wanting a better Ghana for that matter, did you also see beyond that individuals who will be most probably be driven by money from politicians to change their thoughts or their decisions in terms of voting? So, uh, thank you. I don't, the people I spoke to that I had the opportunity to speak to are not people that look like they can be influenced. That's how strong-willed this group of people I spoke to are. Their minds are made up. Their minds are made up. <laughs> because I'm telling you that people literally have said that they won't vote and there is nothing that can change their mind. Whether you give them money or not, whether you are the president of where, they are not changing their mind about it because they want to see change. Mm. You know, so I, I also look beyond that. Even spoke to them outside, tried to let the people who said they won't vote know that it's your civic responsibility. You know, as a citizen of Ghana, you are bound to vote at a point in, you know, time. So uh, I don't think that it would be difficult, it would be difficult for, for anybody to, to, you know, to, and they listed that as problems. So you know that we tomorrow is the, uh, you know, the limited registration yeah. and people will go to, you know, register. Yeah. They highlighted the fact that they have seen so many times that people go there with people that are not even 18 yet. And then they go because they have influence in society. Nobody's able to say, oh, move, don't bring this person here. They know all They that. know all that. They see. That's what I'm telling you that. I like that he said that they are becoming aware. They are very much awake. They are ready to see change. Mm. And they really are moving towards that. So, you know, the limited registration, as I said, is tomorrow. And, I mean, they want to see change there as well. They will want to make sure when they get there, they don't see someone that is not your family member guaranteeing for you. They also hide... Um, highlighted the re um, that they didn't want to see, you know, uh, they wanted the guarantor system to be um, strengthened. Oh, because okay. if you go and anybody can just come and guarant for you, how effective is, yeah. you know, the thing as well, you know? So these children, are, I don't think anybody can change their minds. If anything, they are hoping that there are other first-time voters who come onto their side and, you know, try to change the whole system. Earlier you mentioned something about one of the main concerns of these individuals that you spoke to was unemployment. And all I kept on thinking about was at 18. <laughs> at age, my friend, I can say, yeah, 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 I'm You know, and all of that. But it seems that they hear things, they see things. Yeah, some of them. have family, mm -hmm. relatives, they who are do. coming through it. They do, some of them. Yeah. Some of them, okay, sorry. Oh, no. cool. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, yeah, some of them. So some of them are, are school, they have finished school. Right. Okay, and they don't have the opportunity to probably do, uh, go further right away. Okay. So you've turned 18, obviously you're home, yes. you want to do something you to, before yeah. you yeah. further your, you yeah. know, and they've gone to places and they're not getting, yeah. you go, even in the community, there are, uh, you know, the hard boys there, you even go, they don't give you mm. the chance to do that and until you know someone. So nepotism is it very... It from yeah, it's, it begins from the town, the community, and it spreads to other sides that you are done with your university. They have 
elder sisters and elder brothers who have. And I'm also trying to say that first time voters are not only 18. I mean, somebody yes. was 17 as of last year. So we are looking between 18 to 22. Right. Mm. So imagine that a 20 year old is done with his university, has looked for every job possible. Obviously, they'll mention unemployment. And if you go to Jamestown, you know people have this perception about Jamestown and that people are always using or finding unconventional ways to make money. It's because there is no jobs. You know, if a, a young child was working or they had jobs to do, I don't think anybody would get up and say, I want to find unconventional ways to make money. No young child would want to go and, you know, sell her body or his body to get money. And that's why we have a lot of teenage pregnancies there. We have people who have dropped out. We have people who have, you know, are browsing, people who are fording, all living in the community because there are no jobs. This is very sad. Christopher, now let's talk about your findings on youth unemployment or employment. Uh, per the statistics. I saw a graph. If you can kindly have the graph back on so that Christopher speaks on it uh, for us. Yes, thank you very much. So, Christopher, um, if you can have it, yes. So, kindly speak on this for us. Right. Uh, okay, so I think you used the very graph. Okay. So, with respect to unemployment, yes. Right? I. Okay, this. So this one says sectors hosting employed youth. <coughs> yeah. This government. actually our 2020 data. 2020. Yes. Okay. So we, so the youth manifest. This is not the first time. Okay. This some um, 2012, 20, uh, 20, and then this is the third phase. Oh, okay. Uh, which is 2024. Okay. So uh, with respect to this, we are speaking about in 2020 when the data was collected. Uh huh. Uh, the question was asked young people which of the sectors are capable of employing young people. Right. So, and we found out that 43% responded, uh, was the name, uh, services are likely to employ more people. Then after that, 12% uh, said agriculture. Sorry, and what then is I, services? What really? So are... we are talking about uh, services with respect to government employment. Okay. With respect so to... like Ghana police service? Exactly, uh, all manner like of services. Like the military? Yes. And all, okay. Exactly. Okay. So, and of course, teaching and, teaching, right. and nursing. Yes. And yeah, so those are the services. Okay. Then agriculture, nest, 12%, mm -hmm. then trade. But when it comes to the 20, um, 2023, 2024 data, uh, we have a huge percentage of young people who are saying that it's no more services. If you really want to uh, make a turnout for young people, in respect to employment, you have to look at the sector of um, agriculture, agriculture. Oh. and which is the highest occurring data. Yeah. Then after that, then you take ICT into consideration. Oh. So that is the second one. Then followed by the, 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 so, the services. The services. Yeah, so <coughs> that was the changing of the data we had with respect to... At that to, time? No, no. as a time. So this, this, is, yeah, this is actually 20... 20 data okay. with respect to higher occurrences in terms of employment. Okay. But when it comes to the 2024 uh, data, young people are saying that with respect to employment, if you want to solve the employment issue in the country... Focus on agriculture. Focus on focus agriculture. On focus on IT. IT. Yeah. Okay, so these two training. are the major game changer for young people. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So, so when, when is this going to premiere? Uh, do we, uh, so we've already premiered the episode the on episode, Saturday. Right. It shows every Saturday at 10 a.m. Okay. And we will be having very insightful conversations. I want people to tune in because, as I said, you'll be wild and marveled by, um, you know, the voices these people yeah. have and what they have in their heads that they are waiting and yearning to be heard by everybody, the government. And it's just really amazing. I think that everybody should tune in. It's a good show. Um, every day I'm learning as I go because I'm learning new things. I'm seeing new things. Sure. And, you know, to just get to see that these 18-year-olds are not just 18-year-olds. They're not just sitting at home playing games. They want new things. They want to work. They want to put in their job. And if the path is paved or if the road is cleared for them to do so, they will do it and they will do it to the best of their ability. So yes, just at 18, to, as every Saturday at 10 a.m., please do well to tune in and let's have these insightful conversations. The, with the, the areas we're looking at in the communities, are we looking Everywhere. Here, are no, we no, everywhere. Uh, Schools, churches, hospitals, communities, anywhere we find first-time voters, trust that we will be there to be speaking to them and their voices will definitely be heard.
Every Saturday at 10 a.m. Yes, um, please. Is there a repeat of that? Yes, Not there yet. is in the week, but uh, we are yet to clarify okay. that. Okay, okay. All right, so once we get the repeat day too, we'll let you know so you can continue to watch. This is a new thing. It's a new initiative. I think it's a good thing. You know, it's yeah. really, really, um, you know, mm -hmm. uh, something mm -hmm. that all of us have to be involved because you've got a sister who just turned 18. You've got a brother out there who's, you know, mm -hmm. going to also exercise their, uh, you know, rights. And so we should all make sure that we're pushing them to make decisive decisions that will not end up becoming, you know, two years later, three years later, you've regretted making a decision for voting for party or party B. I wonder if you, with the you first... You have to know what you're doing with yeah. this. Really. <laughs> I wonder if with the first episode, even maybe you, you met somebody who was... Uh, an 18 or 19 or 20 year old who was just on per tab. Oh, oh very much, very much. There's, there's no, you, yeah, yeah. You ask them, you say, what, I don't, what, what? Yeah. No, I won't do it. You yeah. ask them why, you say, why should I? You know? <laughs> this is and they, they've got good reasons to actually. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. They have a lot of good reasons to back us. What's happening right now, mm -hmm. if you want to go and struggle, you know, because you know what it, it means to even go and join the queue. Mm -hmm. You go at f as early as 3 a.m. and 4 a.m. So if I do all of these and then the next two years, I am going through what I'm going through. You know, someone, point. someone shared a very funny story. It said that when you go to queue, people come and queue with stones and yeah. chairs. <laughs> so when, yeah. <laughs> when you get there... There's I'm, no human being, but there's a stone. There are stones standing there. Yeah, so uh, after all this drama and antics, you yeah. know, and then I'm still suffering. Mm -hmm. I don't have a job. I, lights going off mm -hmm. and all street lights not available traffic lights not, i mean it will hurt mm -hmm. you know what i mean and so i don't know but chris you i are you are you excited about this i know yes you've been part of the process and all that but are you excited that you're part of this yeah i'm very much excited uh why because i think young people have key role to play in terms of the development of the country uh with respect to uh the data listed to us last last election year 2020 we have uh, about 55 percent of voters be young people between the ages of 18 to uh, 35 so if these are the uh, determinant of who becomes the next president who mm -hmm. becomes the next leader of the crucial country, stage it, for that means, it means we cannot uh, for that matter downplay the essence of young people in terms of the development of the country and uh, I keep on saying that when it comes to uh, the development of every country every nation every society you have to uh, look at the young people because young people are directly uh, the reflection of the society mm. so if, if you just want to see how developed a nation is, just take a handful of the young people and then run a test on them. That should tell you. So basically, when you take US, when you take UK, just take their young people and see how well they are developed. Take Ghana, take Nigeria, take uh, Togo, and they, they are young people and see how they are faring. That should uh, give you a sense of uh, how the country is doing. So basic for me, young people are the pillar of, of the country mm -hmm. for the sustainable development of the country. It depends on young people because uh, they, they are having the energy, the zeal, the power. Yeah. They are actually the powerhouse of the country, of the nation, of the community. So if we are not giving them the chances, I, and another thing I keep on saying that if we said the young people are the leaders of the tomorrow and they are not part of today's solution, mm -hmm. so how and then they, would they exactly. become the leaders of tomorrow? Yeah. So the time is always now. We have to make sure that young people are included uh, in decision making and not just decision making, the implementation, the, the process throughout the entire process. One of the things young people are calling for is that when it comes to the na National Youth Authority, uh, it's been headed by people out of the bracket of young people age 18 to 35 or 15 to 35. How should that be? I think it's just illogical yeah. that we have national authority, national youth authority beheaded by people over age. The board, young people are not included. So what young people are calling for is that in terms of ministry appointment, let's have young people, at least a minimum of young people being appointed uh, into ministerial uh, <laughs> positions. Yeah. And yeah. as well as it makes it easier uh, yeah. the, the Board of yeah. National Youth Authority and as well as the CEO of the National Youth Authority right. should be young people mm. because uh, the generation we are with, we say Gen Z, mm. how would you be able to understand Gen Z yeah. and therefore develop? When you have an old Z. So the gap keeps increasing and we are not seeing any development because mm. uh, the gap between the aged and then the young people 
are too big and, and it keeps widening. Mm -hmm. And right. for us to close that gap, we have to bring the two together on the same thing. Absolutely. Okay. And I think I agree with you because really, if the, the um, CEO is 60 years old, <laughs> you know, 55, mm -hmm. and he's sitting there, you'll be thinking about his folks. <laughs> Another young man over there who is 13 years, yeah. who is 20 years, who is 15 years, who is... 32, 35, looking for job. Mm -hmm. So it makes sense. But this, this is very, you know, exciting uh, yeah. initiative that we want to see. And we're excited that it's finally started. So please do well, uh, watch it and uh, yeah, send us today's, feedback. Yes, Saturdays. Yes, 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 and so you see me, I'll be in your area very, very soon. So. <laughs> so love, thank you so much, Christopher. Thank you so much for your time. And I'm happy about the fact that the youth of today are gearing towards agriculture because gone was a time when agriculture being studied or being taught in junior high school was not taken serious. Mm -hmm. So if they are willing and ready to take agriculture very serious and be practical about it, I think this is a great one and we need to really look into it. And so our guests for today have been Christopher Wisdom Penu, National Coordinator, Ghana Youth Manifesto, and our very own Lloyd Shola Adeyemi, a.k.a. Shalzi. <laughs> and, she's, you know, and she's the host of Just Turned 18. So viewers, this is where we end this conversation. But coming up next, Karen J has a very interesting one. Mm -hmm. It's time for entertainment, so stick and stay with us, okay? Entertainment and wrap up. So oh. <laughs> those are the two things coming up, so do stay. Yeah. <laughs> Every election season marks a new chapter in the journey of democracy. And for some, it's their very first step into the voting booth. Welcome to Just Turned 18. Let me see by hands those who will be voting. I feel so much excited. Now I have the opportunity to, to use my time to bring someone into power. I'm very excited to vote. The show that delves into the hearts and minds of first-time voters. They see me like inconspicuous person. People usually use chairs, stones to kill. They'll be expecting you to stand behind those chairs and stuff. <laughs> From communities to quiet corners, we journey across the nation, gauging the pulse of first-time voters. It's not about political affiliations. It's about the issues that matter. This economy is very hard, so you just have to vote. Vote wisely. This free education, at least, if you haven't done anything at all, at least, for financial aspects, as reduce the bedding. Someone died because there was no bed. There's nothing that will change my mind to, to register this year. Until I see a change in the health sector, education, and then employment. Join Lois Shola Adeyemi as she explores the hopes, fears, and dreams of a generation poised to make their voices heard. Catch Just Tend 18 every Saturday at 10 a.m. on Joy Prime. Just Tend 18, the critical voice of first-time voters.